My connection with Art Against Knives is a pretty personal one. My little brother Tim, he died 20 years ago in 2002 and very sadly he was stabbed in a carjacking. So learning to live with the fact that he's not here, it's taken a long time. But one of the things is trying to understand what happened to him and realising that that could have shaped the rest of my life or I could just see it for what it is, which is a terrible, terrible thing that happened, but then try and live my life in a positive way and also see what I could do to try and help shine a light on why these things might happen and what can we do to try and stop them happening in future. I appreciate you sharing that with me. I feel like um, what you said around it, you know, like the opportunity and using it to be positive. How do you feel about creativity and the creative opportunities that community can take up to go on to do more influence or make more positive changes? Art Against Knives supports people who are born sometimes in very difficult circumstances. They live in very difficult circumstances. But what I do understand is how the power of creativity can really just help people unlock their talents, believe in themselves, find themselves, find their tribe. I remember one of the first initiatives that I uh, found out about was with the nail bars. And I just really loved the idea that this space had been created, a safe space really, that people could come to, you know, without fear, without judgment, and get the support they needed, either openly or perhaps, you know, behind closed doors, but at least that space was there. If you can create the spaces that mean that it might just break that cycle of violence, then, then that is what it, you know, it has to be about making people understand that we need to do this. Absolutely. So young people get a bit of a bad rep, sometimes labelled perpetrators or labelled with certain stigmas. Yeah, one of the things that happened after Tim died was that when the police went to the house to tell the mothers of the two people who had uh, stabbed my brother, um, when they went to go and tell them what had happened, their reaction was just shock and horror. But learning that, it helped me understand that in this whole situation, they were just as much victims, really, because they were born into a different life, but their mothers were still heartbroken. They couldn't understand how this, how this happened either. And I guess that for me was quite a fundamental reason for, for not thinking about them as perpetrators, the people. You now know why I'm involved in Art Against Knives. Can you tell me, Ricardo, why, why you are? How long have we got? <laughs> um, in a nutshell, I experienced, um, I'll say a lot of deprivation, violence at home. Um, grew up on a different council estates. I was one of the boys and yeah, some unfortunate events happened. I was given an opportunity to reflect and, and, and I was posed some really important questions in regards to like, what do I want to do with my life? So in a nutshell, I thought, you know what, I want to work with children and young people that have experienced some of the stuff, same stuff that I have. Tell me some of the programmes that Art Against Knives are delivering now that you're particularly proud of. I'm proud of it all. So we have essentially two main programmes. One is called In Our Hands, which kind of oversees our nail bars. Um, like we have like in-house nail um, accreditations um, to like provide personal professional development opportunities for like young people like coming up the ranks, whether that's in like nail work and all that type of stuff. And we have um, the lab, which is an open access music studio, really well attended. We have so much great talent. You'll be surprised how many young people or like young guys that would rock up on a Wednesday go into like the music studio in our booth come out out of the booth and be like, that was like, that was so therapeutic. 
and they're talking about their pain. They're talking about like real life circumstances. Um, I think a big part of our work is as much as we like provide these like creative spaces, psychologically informed spaces, so really like promoting and advocating for like uh, better mental health, working with each other, you know, working with young people, understanding their context, not looking at the situation as a whole, but stepping back and looking at the situation that's going on around them. Big question, Ricardo, but how do you see austerity and the spending cuts, how have they affected the work of charities such as Art Against Knives? It's been a couple of decades, you know, with like the cuts and like funding, cuts with like youth clubs. It's all about kind of like survival and the fittest right now, you know, like where are we going to get the money to like continue this, this work, you know? That's hard, really hard, because as you say, you know, this charity is about providing space for young people and uh, that feels like that should be a you know a fundamental right and it's heartbreaking that it's not but you know I guess what I see and what kind of makes me feel positive about it is the work and the people that you see going on you know no matter what seems to be thrown at you you keep going it's amazing <laughs>